Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Pokemon fans of the world, you're your boys Cory, aka Crasher, and Cosmo. Woo! And ladies and gentlemen, you guys know what time it is. We are back once again to discuss leaks for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, with a video like this, obviously, it's going to come with spoilers. So this right here is your obligatory spoiler warning for those of you guys that have accidentally clicked on this video and you do not want to be spoiled. This right here is your opportunity to back out now as the last thing we want to have happen to any of the viewers is to have the game unintentionally spoiled and potentially ruined for them. And another thing I want to add here is that some of what we're going to be covering here may be a little bit confusing, either due to mistranslations or some slight disorganization. So we're going to try our very best to navigate through all of this coherently and as efficiently as possible. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. So once again, we will be referring to Central Leaks as the main source of the leak information, starting off with this. Pommy's evolution is electric fighting. It is about damn time that we have ourselves a badass epic typing like electric and fighting. Personally speaking, two Pokemon that come to mind that are also great candidates of that typing would be Electivire and Zeraora. Zero but that's just us. Smolov evolves into an olive tree. Well, I guess that kind of makes sense. Smolov is like a chibi olive and it evolves into an olive tree. It makes sense. Nothing really groundbreaking. Fue Coco's evolution is not bipedal, so is this going to be a quadrupedal crocodilian type of Pokemon? I sure hope so, and I hope it is as much of a badass as SCP-682, the Immortal Lizard. Whoa. That would be amazing, and if Fue Coco's final evolution actually looks like SCP-682, that thing is so getting that nickname. And that's going to be a new identity. Pretty much. Pretty much. I just want to add this in real quick. I think it's absolutely amazing that Joe Merrick is celebrating his wedding with Marty. Congratulations to the two of you, and I absolutely must say, I admire that G-Max All Creamy Cake. That is amazing. Hashtag Sarah B. Wedding. Anyways, back to the leaks coverage. There is no third legendary this generation. Okay, so it seems like we're not going to have ourselves a third legendary that could possibly represent the present. Now, I'm really interested to see how this is going to be handled. So, are they going back to the Johto and Kanto roots of not having a third legendary? Hmm, that is actually interesting that you brought that up because aside from Gens 1 and 2, Generation 3 all the way to 8 have had third legendaries. So, yeah, maybe they're taking a different approach here that refers back to Johto and Kanto. Who knows? Tauros new form is black, so I guess maybe a black fighter bowl or something like that i mean hmm. that would be absolutely amazing and i really hope that it comes packed with a new typing such as normal fighting this has to happen because that is the only typing that i can picture this form of toros going with what about fighting dog Oh, that would be pretty interesting as well, because the dark typing could be inspired from its black coloring in this form. And you know bullfighting? Yeah, I know bullfighting, and it can get pretty dark sometimes, you know what I mean? Especially if you're the sorry matadors that gotta deal with a pissed off bull. And I'll tell you what, there is no bullshit when it comes to dealing with that. Okay, this might be very disappointing for some. According to the new leaker, Whooper and Tauros are the only two new regional forms. That is really interesting to know. There are eight to nine ancient species. So what I'm getting from this is that it seems like that even though regional forms are not going to be completely phased out of this generation, they are very few and far between. Like, as far as we know, we only have ourselves two new regional forms, but when it comes to new forms in terms of Pokemon, it seems like that these regional fakes or ancient species are going to be more of the focus when it comes to new forms for Pokemon. I don't mind that as long as they deliver with a new concept. I agree. I agree. It's the execution at the end of the day that is either going to sell this or it's going to sink it. Let's hope that it sells. Okay, so this is where things may get a little bit confusing, but try to stay with us. A correction. The leaker replied to a person who was asking about future species, not ancient. That's the first time the leaker has mentioned future forms. We don't know if the leaker is referring to both future and ancient Pokemon as a group. 
So just keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, as we go through. There are between 120 and 140 new Pokemon. This includes the ancient slash future species. So it seems like that this generation's Pokedex is going to be fairly robust. Maybe not as robust numerically when it comes to Gen 5, because Gen 5 introduced the most Pokemon in terms of quantity, but this is sounding pretty damn cool as well. And from those potential 140, we could have ourselves some really, really solid designs. Ancient slash future Pokemon species can't evolve. So I guess this right here is solidified confirmation about whether or not these new form Pokemon concepts can or can't evolve. We have it right here, they can't evolve. Well, fair enough, since almost all UVs can't evolve either. Mm, that's right. We have ourselves almost all of the Ultra Beast Pokemon that can't evolve, with the exception, of course, of Poiple in Inaganadel. All gym leaders have a second job. Okay, that's really good to know. I wonder what the second job could involve. We'll have to wait and find out. One gym leader is a skier. Another one is a streamer. What in the hell? So, we have ourselves potentially a Twitch streamer oh, for a gym leader, YouTube okay? YouTube streamer. A YouTube streamer. Who freaking knows, man? This is pretty damn fun. There's a new Samurai Pokemon. Note, the old leaker previously mentioned a Japanese-themed bug, so could this be it? And honestly, I kind of have that ring and a bell in my head. I could have sworn... I have seen something like this floating around somewhere, and I might have covered that in like a past video or something like that, but honestly, this would be really freaking cool if we ever sell a bug-type samurai-like Pokemon, and for some reason, I'm getting Golisopod vibes from this. What do you think? I think so, too. Yeah. A bug, a samurai. <laughs> yeah. That would be honestly really cool if we had ourselves another Pokemon similar to Golisopod without being the exact same. Please let this be it. The leaker is hinting that Bisharp gets an evolution, but not confirming it for now. Could it be that the Samurai is actually Bisharp's evolution? What? Oh, okay. it already has a crazy <laughs> base attack. Yeah, but then again, you know, we had ourselves a Pokemon like Ursaring get an evolution, and it had a crazy attack stat as is, so maybe we could be having something like this take place for Bisharp, like maybe it gets an even crazier evolution? I don't know, but if this is true, I'm absolutely digging this idea. The new Pokemon with a hammer is Pink. So, perhaps maybe a pixie fairy type sort of Pokemon with a hammer? I really, really don't know what else I could picture this Pokemon being like. What I about can you? Picture a chibi toy hammer. <laughs> a chibi toy hammer. A squeaky one? Oh my god. Don't make me break character here. This this is absolutely hilarious. If that would actually happen. I'm going to absolutely laugh my ass off, but I'm also looking forward to a design like that, should this actually be a thing. Ponyard gets a new evolution, not by Sharp, apparently. Okay, that is interesting clarification right there. Primate gets an evolution. Oh, oh my god. Okay, I am personally very freaking excited, because when I think of yep. Primeape, I think of Ash's Primeape, which honestly is one of the MVP OGs in the OG Pokemon series. Ash's Primeape was absolutely amazing, and that right there was the single reason why I fell in love with Primeape, so Primeape gets an evolution here, man. It's going to be absolutely insane. Now, I hope it's executed well. I mean, it sounds great, it sounds great on paper, sounds nice and sexy, but the execution is what's going to make things 10 times better in this case. Mischievous gets an ancient species. Okay, that kind of sort of makes sense given how Mischievous is a ghost type Pokemon. So maybe it had a previous past form, i.e. ancient form, and that's why it's getting an ancient species here in this sort of scenario. Okay, that is really interesting. I can't wait to see how it's executed. Delibird gets a future species. Okay, well, this one here may be more up your alley because you are very versed in technology and you love futuristic things. So, what do you think about Delibird getting a future species here? I can picture it wearing a jetpack. A jetpack? Really? A jetpack? Well, you know, that could actually kind of make sense since it's sort of fits the bag slash pack theme that it has because regular Delibird is essentially a Santa Claus with a big sack of presents 
but that sack gets replaced and it is a jetpack essentially. Okay, that would be a really interesting approach here. A new ghost dog Pokemon. Oh, I love me doggies. I love doggies. Okay, this right here is very, very awesome. As a dog lover myself, this right here personally very much excites me. I am so excited about this. A new coin Pokemon. Now, I've actually heard some discussions about this, such as on A-Drive's video about this alleged coin Pokemon. So, I guess that right there is one of the object mon that is being introduced in this game, which seems really interesting and also kind of cute, too. Can you imagine a freaking coined-bodied Pokemon as an actual Pokemon? Like, a freaking coin with a face on it. A new fairy Pokemon. Um... Okay, that right there totally isn't vague. Um, of course we're going to be getting new fairy Pokemon, but I guess it's going to be a new fairy Pokemon. So maybe a new concept design, maybe new something about it. I don't know how else I can really take this. There's a new bike Pokemon that is not Coridon or Miraidon. Okay, that's interesting. A another object mon on the table, but it's in the form of a bike. I mean... I guess you could say the closest thing that we got to a bike Pokemon would be that Rodom bike back in Generation 8. Um, okay, well, I am really intrigued to see how this right here is going to be executed. Now, we have ourselves something very, very interesting from Centro, and this is in response to something that we're going to get to next. Also, an explanation of the new types of Pokemon species. First off, we ourselves ancient slash future species, our ancestors or descendants for a current Pokemon that have time traveled from the past or future. These species don't evolve. They are standalone Pokemon, but with high stats. They are classified as brand new Pokemon with their own name and Pokedex number. Next, we have ourselves Convergent Species, a number of new Pokemon that look very similar to an old Pokemon. They are completely unrelated to the original counterpart, but look pretty much the same, almost like a recolor. They can have different typings. These species are based on the Convergent Evolution concept from Biology. Look it up. They also have their own name and Pokedex number. What the hell is this? This right here sounds very, very interesting. I'm the right up, pop right off. Are you kidding me? Like, I am especially ecstatic about the description of, but with high stats. Are we talking about high stats as in, like, maybe legendary stats or pseudo-legendary or something like that? Like, what is happening here? Are you I, stats? Uh, maybe you be stats? I don't even know. I am getting, like, all sorts of crazy-ass vibes out of this. Like, holy shit. Things just got wild. And convergent evolution, isn't that the concept where two entirely unrelated species evolve to get similar traits? Hmm, that is really interesting. Like for example, you've got dolphins and sharks evolving to look similar and mm -hmm. have similar parts like fins. Yep, while being completely different species, that's right, that's a really solid example. So. We're having something that is a really interesting way of nature being implemented here in Pokemon. Like, I am actually really on board with this, by the way all of this sounds so far. We also saw Centro saying, Update, here's the list of all currently leaked regional forms, ancient slash future species, and convergent species for Pokemon. By the way, it looks like this is it for regional forms and evolutions. Those are the only ones according to the leakers. And what we have here is a nice little graph of sorts, a nice little table where it showcases regional forms being Wooper as a poison type and Tauros, new evolutions, and we were sells Primeape, Wooper, Murkrow, Dunsparce, Giraffarig, and Pawniard. Ancient species, we have Jigglypuff, Amoongus, and Mischievous. Future species, we have Delibird. Convergent species, aka Arfakes, we have a water type Diglett. Okay, now this right here, the Convergent species in particular, like I said, I am very, very much on board with this. I'm on board with everything so far about what you are seeing on the screen. It all sounds really freaking dope, I'm gonna and be honest. looks like Dan Spass is finally getting some love. Yes! 
finally, after almost like, what, 20 years of the fandom begging for a Dunsparce evolution, we're finally getting it. Thank you, Game Freak. Now you have one job here, do not fuck up its evolution, please. Now before we continue on, ladies and gentlemen, what we are going to be getting into may sound like it's a little bit of drama between leakers. We just want to make a disclaimer right now that we do not intend on adding any fuel whatsoever to this drama. Let them have their beef, we're just simply doing our part to cover the news, as well as give our thoughts and opinions about the information presented. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get on with part 7 of these crazy ass leaks. The old leaker is back again and after feeling his relevance fading away because of the new leaker, but is being vague with a lot of details. The old leaker claims some Pokemon mentioned by the new leaker may be cut and saved for the DLC. Take from that what you will, ladies and gentlemen. It sounds slightly convoluted and slightly sort of confusing, so just take that, especially with a grain of salt. They also reconfirm that Tauros and Wooper are the only two regional forms for the base game. There are three new dog Pokemon. Three new dogs? Oh my god! Okay, so one of them is the ghost dog mentioned by the other leaker. Oh my god, so now we don't have one doggy. We got three doggies. Oh my god, I am gonna be in heaven when this game releases. Oh my god, I am so excited. I am so excited, my god. Okay, let's keep going before I blow a gasket. There's one new spider Pokemon line. It was teased on the first trailer. Now it's going to be interesting to see how this new spider Pokemon line is executed because I am getting some Spinarak and Ariados vibes. Now those Pokemon had amazing designs, at least in our opinion, but that's literally all they had going for them. They were pretty forgettable and underwhelming in other aspects, but we did have ourselves the Araquanid line that kind of redeemed the concept of spider Pokemon, and I hope this right here redeems the concept of spider Pokemon even further. Moving on, we have this. A Hardcore Queen gets a future species. Okay, a Hardcore Queen. I wonder what that's all about here. Vespi Queen, Arnido Queen. Oh, and you know what? It actually kind of makes sense now that you mentioned those two Pokemon as examples because Vespa Queen is literally a Queen Bee and Nido Queen literally has Queen in her name. So maybe, just maybe, we could be getting one of those two Pokemon getting a future species or maybe another Pokemon that we haven't yet thought of in the moment getting a future species that could be deemed as a Hardcore Queen type of Pokemon. But moving on. One future pseudo-legendary gets a future species. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. That sounds dope. But you know something else that sounds dope? Is this. Another pseudo-legendary gets an ancient species. Okay, so this right here begs the question. Are we talking about the pseudo-legendaries of past generations, or perhaps maybe we are getting two pseudo-legendaries introduced in this generation, and both of them are getting a future and or ancient species. I'm willing to bet it's the former, where we have ourselves past pseudo-legendary Pokemon getting a future species, and the other one getting an ancient species. Can you imagine an ancient species for Metagross? I mean, Metagross is a pretty futuristic looking Pokemon as it is, but imagine it having an ancient form. That right there would be really interesting to see executed. And the future form for Tyranitar. Oh yeah, I totally am getting Mecha Godzilla vibes out of that. That would be amazing to get a futuristic Tyranitar. Can you imagine Steel and Dragon? That would be so freaking cool, man. It would be absolutely unreal. A Gen 1 Pokemon gets a convergent species that turns it from a sea Pokemon to a ground Pokemon. Okay, that could literally be anything. Maybe we could have ourselves either a Pokemon like Tentacruel, maybe Lapras or Starmie or Gyarados. Like, I don't even know. Like. Gen 1 introduced a lot of Water-type Pokémon, so there is a lot of Gen 1 Pokémon to speculate on that could get the Convergent Species, converting it from a Sea Pokémon to a Ground Pokémon. Can you imagine a Ground-type Gyarados? Oh my god, that would be amazing. Or a Ground-type Lapras as well. Like, that would be also really cool. A Gen 5 Bug gets a Future Species. Now, Gen 5 has introduced a fair amount of Bug-type Pokémon, such as the Levani line, the Galvantula line, 
the Volcarona line, as well as the Estelgor line, the Scavalier line, and many more accompanying that. So, can you imagine a futuristic Volcarona? That would be absolutely crazy. I mean, imagine having a futuristic Tyranitar being like Mecha Godzilla, and perhaps maybe futuristic Volcarona could be like a futuristic variation of Mothra from the MonsterVerse. Oh. Now that would be amazing. As someone who is a big fan of MonsterVerse, this is something I would pay loads of money to see actually take place in Pokemon. Legendary Pokemon are getting ancient slash future species, but the leaker thinks they may be saved for the DLC. Okay, so legendary Pokemon getting ancient slash future species. Now, this has to be the past legendary Pokemon that are getting this type of treatment. Can you imagine if we have ourselves the legendary beasts of Raikou, Suicune, and Entei, perhaps maybe getting ancient or future species? It would honestly be really cool to see if they got ancient species, because if you guys are familiar with the lore of Raikou, Suicune, and Entei, they were actually reincarnated by Ho-Oh after their previous life forms perished in a tower fire, and they perished as dogs. So maybe we could have something like that be implemented when it comes to legendary Pokemon getting these ancient slash future species. There are two Pokemon that get both future and ancient species. Oh my god. So we get two Pokemon that gets the treatment, the best of both worlds, so to speak, when it comes to future and ancient species. Oh my god. How do you feel about this? This is nuts, man. I wonder what Pokemon that could be. I wonder too. Like, the possibilities are endless with something this vague coming across. Like, Zatu? Can you imagine a futuristic and ancient form for Zatu? That would also be really cool because Zatu is a Pokemon that is seemingly forgotten despite having a pretty awesome design, if I'm going to be honest. And it's Pokedex entry. It looks at the future and past at the same yes. time. Yes! Oh my god, yes. Please. Zatu has to be one of those Pokemon. It only makes sense because of its actual lore in Pokemon. The leaker seems to imply that the ancient slash future species will be treated as legendaries. Okay, so treated as legendaries. Are we talking about as lore or maybe as stats as well? Because that would be amazing. So, UB vibes again. Yeah, UB vibes again indeed. And to end things off, we have ourselves a bit of clarification. Note, a previous version of the last tweet incorrectly mentioned that it was Koridon slash Miraidon who were getting the species in the DLC. We incorrectly assumed the leaker was referring to those, but in reality, never specified. We have corrected it now, sorry for the confusion. Well, any clarification is good clarification, and we hope that you guys were actually able to follow through all of this, despite some of it coming across a little bit weird and maybe a little bit complicated, but we hope that you guys enjoy what you are getting out of these videos thus far. Now, before we end the coverage here, this right here is a really solid takeaway, and something that we both feel 100%. To be honest, I'm not sure how I feel about the whole freaking game leaking four months before release, and that's coming from an account dedicated to this. And this rate, in a few days, there will be nothing left to discuss or speculate about. Now, I'm not going to go too much into my own personal opinion about this, because there's a fair bit that I could say about this, so instead, I will refer you guys to a video I made on my second channel that sort of touches base on this situation here about the leaks and about the lack of advertising when it comes to official sources for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet news. I do have to be honest with you guys, had they have had a better marketing scheme when it comes to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, these leaks probably wouldn't be as much of a thing here and now as opposed to towards the end of release. But that right there is just my own opinion. But like I said, I have a second channel video on this topic where I go more into it, so please check it out. Links in the description down below. Now with all of that being said, ladies and gentlemen, what are your guys' thoughts and opinions about what it is we covered here in this video? And what stands out to you guys the most? Not just out of what we covered here in this video, but so far in our crazy-ass series of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet leaks coverage. 
Sound off in the comments down below, ladies and gentlemen. We would love to hear uh, what it is you guys have to say. And that's it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. So we want to say thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing, and especially comment your thoughts down below, because we love hearing from you guys. Always have. That will never, ever change. So thank you guys again for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day or night, depending on your time zone. And we'll, we'll see you guys in the next one. one.